morning and welcome to Open Your Eyes. Such a morning, right? I am John Palacio. And I'm April Martinez. And thank you for joining us this morning. We are in the beautiful island of... Uh, San Pedro. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. What a lovely, lovely morning oh, it is. We could, actually hear, uh, we could actually hear the sea uh, lushing across the largest living barrier reef in the world. Yes. The sun is shining beautifully and we are at Gran Caribe. Caribe. So what a lovely morning it is. It April. is a lovely morning. It was a wonderful night to wake up with your sunrise and your coffee. And you hear all the birds. And people are out and about already right here in San Pedro. Definitely people yes. are out and about. That's uh, just uh, the culture here in La Isla Bonita, San Pedro. Mm -hmm. But primarily so you might be wondering why we're here. April, <laughs> what's the purpose of us being here today? Well, of course, John, we are here because we are at the annual meeting for the degraded land rights. Definitely. Yes. And uh, with that said, uh, we want to also introduce to you our first guest. And this is what's buzzing, actually, uh, for the reason why we're here. This is what's buzzing. We want to introduce to you our first guest of the morning. And uh, to lead us in what's buzzing is none other than the Honorable Orlando uh, Habet, Minister of Sustainable Development, Climate Change, and Disaster Risk Management. Minister, good, good morning. Good morning, good Minister. And good morning. Um, welcome. Good morning, April. Um, I needed to Belize. correct myself, Minister, because it's the meeting on restoring yes. the degraded lands in Latin America and the Caribbean. I had to yes. make sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> certainly, certainly. No, certainly it's a pleasant uh, morning, and um, we are pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday we had our first uh, Council of Ministers where I lead as President of uh, uh, Pro Tem mm -hmm. uh, for CCAD, which is the Council of Ministers of Environment for Central America. Um, so we assume the presidency at the same time the Prime Minister assumes the presidency of SICA and also the Foreign Ministry, the Ministry for Agriculture through CAC and also the Ministry of Health with COMISCA and so it's uh, the entire uh, sectors within SICA mm -hmm. that we assume that pro tem uh, chairmanship. So yesterday our first meeting, uh, very hectic, uh, a long agenda, but I think that we uh, moved through several uh, agenda and thematic items that are very important to us. For us, what was important is that Belize uh, follows the presidency of uh, Dominican Republic okay. and they handed over some three weeks ago. So yesterday at our first meeting, we had to really again itemize our priorities and for us, some key areas that we want to prioritize are one, to establish that integration between CARICOM and Central America, mm -hmm. especially in regards to climate change. Mm -hmm. Last year at the SICA CARICOM meeting, the heads decided that uh, they wanted uh, five C's to assist to bridge that gap that's been there for so long, uh, especially in the area of climate change. Why important? Because um, when we go to COP meetings, mm -hmm. uh, we want to see that we have uh, common positions. Yes. Yes. The more countries you have on a common position, uh, the stronger your, 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 your position in negotiating for what you want. Yes. So that's very important. But also uh, with the possibility of trade, mm -hmm. CARICOM in Central America, and other areas of cooperation. Yeah. Um, we want to strengthen the, the institution of CCAD, making sure that uh, Belize also gets its fair share in all the countries, uh, as a matter of fact. Dominican Republic is part of it also, so it's Central America plus uh, Dominican Republic. Um, we want to make sure that the projects that come in, that Belize can also share. There's a project which was online before we came into office uh, called the Dry Corridor. Uh, the first meeting I realized that we are not part of it, but I was wow. being asked to participate, wow. to sign, to, to, to lobby on its behalf through the funding that was coming from the GCF. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's about $179 million and Belize is not a part of it. Wow. So um, now with my presidency, I'm trying to push so that we can at least get them to agree that we might not be a full member for that uh, dry corridor project, mm -hmm. but for us to get the support because we have two northern districts and a portion of Belize and Cairo district which are up in that area that uh, really gets dry. So hopefully we can get some assistance through that. Where do you see um, some of the the underlying similarities between Latin America and the Caribbean? That yes, they are almost similar across the Caribbean region yeah. and somewhat to that extent also with Central America. Mm -hmm. But um, we are small countries and we can share our production by trading with each other. 
and so that we do not have to do extra regional uh, trading if we can do regional trading that was a help us a lot. When it comes to uh, yesterday's meeting, what was the uh, feel coming out of that? I mean, uh, you know, we're here to discuss and we also want to be on right. especially with the inf information that is, uh, that is being dispensed. And then Belize also uh, is in a great position of, of actually uh, setting the trend and then all the other countries jumping Policy, on board. Yeah. What's the feel coming out of yesterday's meeting? Um, I believe that um, when we did our presentation and um, uh, pointed out our priorities, uh, it was accepted. Um, that's the way it, 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 it follows yeah. from one country to the next. Uh, Salvador follows us in the next six months from July to December. Mm -hmm. And so what we actually do is that we set our priorities. We try to at least start off two or three of our project activities and also have to complete what the prior uh, presidency could not complete but had started. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so what we cannot start uh, by the time the six months is up, because it's a very short time, it is. Mm -hmm. we at least set the stage so that the next country which will be a can also have that part of the continuity. Mm -hmm. But um, for example, we can really share experiences, share expertise. Uh, one of the projects is the MARTOR project. Uh, Belize has been very successful with that. Most of that work has been going on in the Orange Walk district with the, with the, um, with the river mm -hmm. and doing water sampling and everything else. We hear about the problems that they have occasionally, especially dry season with fish dying right. so we're looking at that what contribution the agriculture sector does to the damage to the river what contribution comes from the city or into our town proper itself and so uh, we studied that and it's part of that bridge to reef problem because we cannot save the reef we cannot save the ocean if if we do not also do the part that is needed to be done at the inland area mm -hmm. yes. right so yeah. in spanish is uh, Cuenca, which is the basin or yeah. the, or the yes, ridge. Yes. So we have to do the part, even for, for issues like plastics. Mm -hmm. The plastics will end up in the ocean. Some maybe because we're here at the Keys, the tourists, or ourselves sometimes throw a, a piece of garbage or something yeah. like that. Yes. But a lot of it comes from inland, from into the streams, mm -hmm. drains to the streams, to the rivers, eventually Watch to the shores of the, the, shore. of the ocean. Yeah. So, yeah. so the project has to be from ridge to reef. Right. So right. We, we are in a, a, a unique position as a country. We've got to put in Central America, we've got to put in the Caribbean. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we're holding, uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, the pro tempore pro presidency uh, was given to us. Is there anything new we're putting on the table? Well, I think that part with the integration is, is, is Possibly not, not a new idea, mm -hmm. but it is one that is now going to be pushed forward right. because it's a uh, part of the, the um, coming from the SICA presidency, which now is uh, Prime Minister Briseño and ourselves and uh, all the uh, pro tem chairs will be pushing towards that in their sectors and, and, their, and their portfolios, trying mm -hmm. to, to move that forward. So I think that is uh, something that we can achieve. And if we can take the leadership role since we have the presidency, yes. then I think we can achieve a lot. Um, it is not going to be completed in six months, but there will be follow-up. When we're gearing up towards going to COP next year, uh, what are the issues that what Caribbean and Latin America are facing that you are all sheer focusing on for next year? Well, right now is the loss and damage fund. We are lucky that um, uh, there is a commission that has been formed, and so we have uh, one person will be representing uh, that commission from the Dominican Republic, the Vice Minister for Environment. We have one from Barbados, which will take over, and then we also have one from Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. So we have three persons who will be in that commission looking at the loss and damage fund along with the rest of the world, the, the representatives from the rest of the world. So that is one position that we are going to push forward from our presidency, from CCAD, trying to see how we can get the three uh, leaders from that area together yes. and also that they can also push our agenda forward so that at the end when the negotiations for the loss and damage fund comes up that we all share in the in, in the benefits and try to see that it is formed the way we want as yes. much as possible yeah. yes. and surely um, we are small uh, developing countries we are termed as uh, small island developing states mm -hmm. and so we have uh, a high vulnerability and something the Prime Minister has mentioned before because this is something that uh, a long time ago, uh, what the, 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 the big players were doing was they were looking to assign financing uh, based on your GDP. Yeah. Yes. So if let's say you earn 
uh, per capita GDP in Belize is 1,500 US dollars, mm -hmm. and if the limit is 1,500 and anything above that, then you do not qualify. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, that, yeah. that, that can't work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are looking at the multidimensional variability index. Uh, we have different uh, areas in which we are vulnerable, so we, we have to find a way how to do that assessment, possibly a matrix. Yeah. And then you go ticking them off, and if you have a certain score, then you qualify, if not, then, then yeah. you don't qualify. But at least it was going to be fair. And I'm sure Belize, most of the Caribbean islands, and many of the countries in Central America will qualify. When we're talking about all of the, the small islands and, and developing states, each of them, including Belize, have diplomatic relations with their former colon colonizer countries, um, the United States, uh, throughout Europe and in Latin America. How, does the, how do these meetings strengthen or affect that relationship? Um, for us, we are fortunate that uh, we are still members of the, um, of, of the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and so we have a very good working relationship. Um, we get some assistance for our NDC implementation plan, and even for implementation from different projects with the, from, from the Commonwealth. Um, our finance advisor was, uh, was paid from the, the, the Commonwealth Secretariat. Um, my last conversation with the Secretary General for the Commonwealth Secretariat in, at COP27 was that um, we are going to see how we can find uh, a way to do an early warning system for the entire Caribbean for hurricanes and, yes. other, and, and other events so that we do not have to depend maybe only on what we get from Miami but the storms are coming from south from, yeah. so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's why that's the information we actually want to have mm -hmm. and we can share along and then it's coming closer to one island so they, they get uh, more uh, closer information yeah. it's shared uh, along the, 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 the path and all of the countries in the Caribbean can, can have an early warning and get prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems that we uh, seem successful in terms of meetings that started yesterday. Uh, what's expected today and what's going to happen moving forward? Yes, today is a separate meeting for today and tomorrow. Uh, this meeting is uh, actually the 20 by 20 initiative meeting, uh, uh, also discussing the bond challenge and the decade of restoration. Mm -hmm. And so we're sort of combining the three, which are, have a lot of similarity. The 20 by 20 uh, initiative is uh, a project under uh, WRI, the World Resource Institute. And initially the project was 20 by 20 because they wanted to plant 20 million trees yes. by 2020. Yes. Now they're aiming for 50 million trees by 2030. The, the name hasn't changed. <laughs> but uh, interesting, uh, at COP26 in Glasgow, I was invited to do a presentation at the University of Glasgow by Mr. Walter Vergara, who was the CEO for, yeah, for the initiative. Mm -hmm. And I went to, the, to do the presentation. Lo and behold, two weeks later, he called and he said, listen, people were listening. They are very interested in Belize. Uh, what you expose out there uh, brought out some interest. And about a month later, he said, listen, we haven't had our meeting or yearly meeting for, for, for the initiative. Uh, because of COVID, uh, 2023 will be our next meeting. Yes. Would you be able or want to host a meeting? And I gladly jumped on that opportunity yes. because it, it's a, it exposes us. It gives us some marketing out there. People will find out what we have, what we do. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, at the end, we can get some investments into Belize, especially in the issue of, restor of, of uh, restoration. So many of the topics today and tomorrow will deal with uh, restoration. Uh, the decade for restoration is to be able to, be, to, to plant, to, to reforest, to a forest, and, yeah. and to get rid of those, not get rid of, but occupy those degraded lands yeah. and put them, put them to use. Um, there are a lot of benefits. As a matter of fact, it is one way to look at it as part of the green revolution because uh, our economy will have to eventually, at least for, sh for, for some time, get into the green financing and, and, the, and the green revolution because uh, it is a way to create job opportunities. Uh, a young person can go collect some seeds, do a nursery, sell the plants or go plant them themselves or get some organization out there that wants to do the planting and then yeah. they already have the seedlings so it will provide jobs for sure. But also, um, we hear about carbon credits. Yes. Yes. And so planting trees uh, increases the, the capture of carbon from the atmosphere. Uh, when it is measured, that carbon has value. So whatever we do not contribute to our NDCs as our commitment, 
everything that's extra can be sold and we can get in some funding for the country to build back, uh, put back into our natural resources, uh, to create jobs, or even to spend on infrastructure, health, education, whatever it is. Which, which brings... Uh, a, a <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems we, that know, we know that yes, you are yes, extremely yes. busy. It is, it is mm -hmm. going to be a full week. I, I imagine that. I know we have taken a lot of your time, but we appreciate you coming to sit with us and giving us a snippet of the restoration of land, degraded land and Latin America and the Caribbean meeting today. We wish you the best of luck. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and just to mention, it's, it's degraded and deforested. Degraded and, and deforested. Because though that watch which we consider deforested lands are those lands that have been, uh, the trees have been taken out, but a complete land use change has occurred. For example, in agriculture where you tear down the bushes, yes. you plow yes. it, you till yes. it, and then you plant something else. Yes. And the, the degraded are basically those which have forest that has been thinned out. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back and replant in spaces that, that are left. Yeah. And afforestation well, is where there's land that is really bare and there are no trees, and then you come back and you actually build a small forest. Yeah. There we go. Oh, thank you so much. We're grateful. Nice We're extremely grateful that you were able to join us uh, this morning. And actually, it is a great way to start the morning on what's what buzzing. Yes. None other than uh, the minister uh, with responsibility of uh, sustainable development, climate change, and disaster risk management, Honorable Orlando Abed. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And we will be out there doing our best showcasing Belize. <laughs> we expect nothing but the best from you. Thank you so much. Thank All right. And, and that's, you know, April, that is, that is uh, a piece of the pie in terms of yes. what's buzzing. It is uh, very important uh, for you to know that uh, this uh, has a lot to do uh, with how our future is going to be shaped out. Yes. And the minister, uh, of course, uh, making sure that we're dealt with I think properly. it. I think it um, shows testimony, John, to the fact that Belize has a major responsibility. I don't think we understand the... the the importance yes. of where we stand because we really are that bridge between Latin America and the Caribbean. We have both feet in both places and we are fortunate enough that we can bring all of these countries together and have the conversation that affects all of us. Indeed, and uh, of course, this is all about the climate change investment in Belize of, as well and uh, conservation initiatives, right. forestation, deforestation, yeah. all these conversations coming up throughout, throughout the week like we mentioned. Things got started uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, it continues throughout uh, the week, uh, leading up into the weekend. Yeah. We'll have a host of panel uh, to discuss uh, this morning. As a matter of fact, we'll be kicking things off with the CEO in the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change, and Disaster Risk Management, Dr. Kenrick Williams, who'll be talking to us about the week of activities. Yes, and of course, following that conversation, John, and just sticking to the entire theme of today, we will be joined by representatives from the Belize Forest Department, and they will be talking to us about the restoration strategy and how it fits into this week's discussions and the opportunities for investments. All right, that's going to be conversation number two. And April will be summing things up with none other than the CEO, in the, it actually the chief executive officer indeed, uh, executive director and forest economist to talk about the uh, bond, bond challenge. challenge. I know what it Joint is. Joint annual meeting <laughs> and investment <laughs> opportunities. Uh, he'll be joining us this morning. That's not, and uh, it's going to be an entire panel. It's a panel. And so, so we're looking forward to uh, that conversation or those conversations it's for this It's going morning. to be a whirlwind. Indeed. But I'll tell you what, just in case you're wondering what the weather is like in uh, the beautiful island of La Isla Bonita, San Pedro, you could see it right, right behind here me. behind us. <laughs> beautiful, uh, right here on the landscape of uh, Gran Caribe. What a beauty, hearing the, wi hearing the, 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 the wind, the, seas, the seas, seas, the waves, laughing. all of it. We really yeah. hope that wherever you are, it is just as sunny as it is here in San Pedro. We really thought it was going to rain, John. We really <laughs> felt it was going to rain, but nonetheless, a beautiful morning. We've got conversations upon conversations to talk about the importance of climate change and much more right here live on 5. So we're going to take our first break of the morning. When we come back, of course, we'll be getting things started with the CEO, actually, in the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change, and the Disaster Risk Management, none other than Dr. Dr. Kenrick Williams. We'll take the break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.